Jojo, uh, who is our Associate Executive Director, and Gwydion, who is in charge of this project, which is called the New Play Exchange. Gwydion will talk to you about the history and development of it, but we've been working on it for more than a year now, uh, and we are in the beta testing phase, headed for a full public rollout in January. And we've been traveling across the country doing these type of introductory uh, sessions, gathering information about what the field wants this product to look like. And we're very excited. You guys are one of the first groups uh, to get to see it when you're all mixed together. We've been doing sessions specifically for playwrights and sessions specifically for uh, readers. Joe will explain in a minute. We're actually leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow we won't be with you for the rest of the weekend because we are headed for the Literary Managers and Dramaturgs Association uh, meeting in Boston, where tomorrow afternoon we'll be presenting it to the LMDA members. So, yay, congratulations. Glad you're here. Glad you're going to share this with us. You're going to have a bazillion questions. We're going to have plenty of time afterwards to do that. And like I said, we'll be around the rest of the day. So, City Rights, welcome to the New Play Exchange. <laughs> Mark, can you hear me? I can. Awesome, I can hear you. That's great. Um, thank you all for coming. This is way more people than I thought were going to be here. I love each and every one of you, and I hope you love me and us by the end uh, of what we're going to say. This is uh, NNPN, and we're here to talk about the New Play Exchange, which is a new technology platform built for the common good of the new play sector to connect plays and producers. And I'm going to unpack that really weighty statement for you with uh, about 45 minutes of my time. And then you're going to have so many questions, you're going to want to kill me with them. And I'm going I'm to sit here, and we're going to have a great dialogue. So a little bit about what this is, a little bit of context. This is not just an initiative of NNPN. We have partners all around the country who have been working with us for a long time. Some of you are here. Haley uh, Finn is here from the Playwright Center. Uh, LMDA has been a partner of ours, the Playwrights Foundation and Chicago Dramatists. So this is a sector-wide initiative. This is not just being, you know, we're not just going rogue trying to transform how everybody does their work. This is the sector coming together, joining hands, building a new platform as one. And you see that we've got theaters represented and players represented and, and literary managers and dramaturgs represented. We've even met with agents. We've met with people from publishing. We have met um, with people in every single part of the new play uh, sector in the American theater. So uh, this is the wisdom of crowds coming together to build a new solution. We're also not just doing this ourselves financially. We have partners. We, uh, the work we've been doing is built on a major cornerstone grant from the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and very recently a very large grant from the NEA. So uh, again, this is uh, foundation, major foundations are behind what you're about to see. We're not just in this like a tech startup to make a quick splash and make a profit. We're not about profit, we're about helping to transform and stabilize the sector. Uh, so what have we done so far? Well, <coughs> until about March of this year, as Nan mentioned, we went around the country interviewing people to help understand how we could build a technology platform that actually served the real needs of practitioners in a variety of roles. We then engaged a development team and we built uh, the prototype, which you're going to see later. Uh, we are now in the beta testing field, so we are going around the country signing people up for our beta platform, um, specifically people affiliated with our partner organizations. And they're in there and they're testing the platform and using it and finding all the mistakes and the things that we can do better and the things they love and they're writing me emails all the time and we're having great conversations because then we're going to go into redevelopment at the end of this year and release it to the public in early 2015. So what you're going to see later, you will have a chance to access before long and use. So I want to talk about exactly why we are doing what we are doing. The context for how things are working now in the American theater. There are about 15,000 playwrights in the American. Done a lot of research on that number. It's an approximation. And they're producing, on average, one new play a year. 
that they consider finished or ready to go. At the same time, there are about 1,500 world premieres every year. Not great math. <laughs> right? And we have technology that we are currently using to filter 1,500 plays out of this pile into those slots. That technology is the submission process. <laughs> don't you love it? <laughs> no, you don't love it? <laughs> nah, I don't love it either. Nobody loves it. What are you going to do? It's horribly broken, right? But it's what we've got. It is the technology we've got. And we have patched it. We have used all kinds of um, software patches to fix the bugs and glitches that we all experience, the giant stacks of scripts and the overwhelming uh, amount of work we have to consider, and for players, it's the place, places we have to send and keep track of all the work. We, you know, we've got agents trying to act as a filter. We've got people who need to have the right credentials from the right graduate programs. We've got submission windows, which we open for a short amount of time. We've got contests to pit plays against one another. We've got fees for things. We've done everything we can to try and make this process work. And it's dying. It's, we're at the point now where many theaters have just shut down. They've admitted that it's an illusion that it isn't working. And actually, bully for them, right? They've said, this software isn't serving us anymore. This technology isn't serving us anymore. Now, obviously, we'd like to open more slots and change the math equation. But until we can actually do that, what we have done with NNTN and our partners is offer a replacement for that entire technology. Instead of the submission process, we are building the new play exchange. I'm going to talk to you about what that is from three different perspectives. First, from the perspective of a playwright. So a playwright has, say at any one time, four plays that she or he is putting out in the world in various states of completeness. Actively, you know, thinking and working about it. And a playwright is surrounded by a universe of theaters in the country, right? Thousands of them. Only that player's knowledge of those theaters is really incomplete. There are theaters you don't know about, theaters you misunderstand, you don't know their mission, they're out there, but you're unaware of them. And so you send play A there, and play B there, and play C there, and play D there, and you're just blah, 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 and you've got a spreadsheet. How many playwrights here have a spreadsheet somewhere in their computer where they're tracking all their submissions, or a Gmail folder, or some kind of, or a piece of paper, or slips of paper, or nothing. And you're like, whoa, you get a return, you don't remember you sending it out. Whoa. Or you get an acceptance, which is great. You're like, huh, where did this come from? Right? It happens all the time. It's chaos, and you can't keep up with it. And it's, um, the work becomes about um, email management instead of about actually building relationships with other artists. So what happens worse is you might have a play, and there might be a theater that's exactly right for it, but you don't know them. They're out there looking for the kind of work you have. And there's a theater you send a bunch of your work to, and you get pro forma rejection letters that tell you, keep sending us your work. And so you do, but they don't really like your work. And there's a theater <laughs> that you really want to work for that's just gone out of business, and you have no idea because you're looking at the dramatist source book or some other outdated information source for knowledge about where to send your play. So this is, this is the world we're living in. This is what this, the technology of the submission process is doing for us. In the new play exchange, we are getting rid of submissions. Submission doesn't exist anymore as a paradigm. And instead of submission, we have sharing. When a player finishes a play, she or he will share it with the new play exchange. Put it one place where it can be found. We're going to talk about what that looks like, but essentially you upload a script, you tag it with a bunch of metadata, which is the number of characters, their ages, their ethnic backgrounds, uh, the, the genre, keywords for the subject matter, etc. You put it up there, and boom, there it is. It's a national database of new plays. So now, let's think about this from the perspective of a theater. So you're the average run-of-the-mill theater, our best friends, the, the people in this room, the people who have embraced new work and are championing it around the world. And you've got a four-play season, except you know, one is Romeo and Juliet, one is um, Fences, and one is Venus and Fur. <laughs> but you've got a plot for a new play, and it, it matters a lot to you, and it's towards your mission. And how do you find and choose that work? What is the process by which you choose that work? So, you're surrounded by 15,000 playwrights. 
right? 15,000 of us out there in the world, and your knowledge of them is imperfect too. You don't know them all, you can't possibly. There are some that you have relationships with. You've done this person's work, and you've had this person as a resident artist, and you've done a reading of this one, and read it. So you've got some relationships, but mostly there are names that are out there and names you don't even know. And then you open your submission window, and you get submissions from all the people you know, and a lot of people you don't know. And you end up with giant stacks, and you don't know how to process it all. It's too much information. It happens too fast. You're overwhelmed. You can't value. You can't find your relationships in the stack. You can't have meaningful connections with artists with a stack in front of you. So in the world of the new play exchange, we have eliminated submissions, right? It's gone. That word is dead to us. You'll never find it anywhere within the new play exchange. Instead of accepting submissions, we have a place you can go to discover work. The New Play Exchange is a sharing and discovery engine for the new play sector of the American theater. It's a place that you, if you're a theater with that slot open, can go, set your criteria, do a robust search, and find the work you're looking for. Let's talk about this from the third and final perspective, that of the reader, which is a term we're using to cover a multitude of people with a multitude of labels in the American theater, people whose job it is as literary managers or as dramaturgs or as directors or in whatever capacity to read scripts, think about them for the American theater. We're going to talk to LMDA tomorrow I get on the plane. <laughs> These people stand between playwrights on one side and a theater on the other side. Except it's actually a little more like this, right? <laughs> and it's actually a little more like this, or in fact like that. So they've got a day job, and they've got a passion theater that they run on the side, and then they're actually reading scripts for a national contest. And then while they're reading scripts, they know other theaters, and they know, boy, this would be right for so-and-so, and this would be right for so-and-so. Their job is actually twofold. The first thing that a person in this capacity does is endorse the plays they read, by which I mean they say, this is good. This piece of work is good. It's promising. It's beautiful. It's on its way to being transformative. It's uh, you know, a work of high quality on its own terms. And the second half of what they do, which is where it gets tricky, is matchmaking. It's not only good, it's good for you. And what we have heard from these people as we have gone around the country is there's a lot more of the former than there is of the latter. There are more scripts that they love than that they can produce or that they can then share with a specific person to produce. So we have given them tools in the New Play Exchange to do both of those things, and we're going to talk about what they are. Uh, you know, so they, what do they do with all that energy? The, what they do is they write recommendations. So right now what happens is they have this knowledge that they're slowly accreting as people who evaluate plays, and they will occasionally get an email, I'm desperate for a play about climate change by a woman with less than five characters. Do you know anything? And they're like, blah, blah, blah. and they don't, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They send out emails to their network of friends. Everyone does this. And it's really hard to find. So. In the new play exchange, they will be able to, when they find work that they care about, find work that they value, write a recommendation of it. Now, what is a recommendation in the new play exchange? It's text. It's not a thumbs up. <laughs> it's not three stars out of five. It is actual written text. I'll show you some later. It is, this play is manifestly important because of blah, blah, blah. It really needs to be seen by a wider audience. It's not damned with faint praise kind of praise. It's not, this play will be great when the second act is fixed. It's not, of all the crappy work I've seen by this playwright, this is the least crappy. <laughs> it's unabashed praise. It's all, so it's positive, it's sex, and it's also both signed and public. You, when you are in the new play exchange, you will see who wrote it, and anyone will be able to see what you wrote. So there's no hiding. This is just praise for people whose work you value. So the other, so what, the ha what then happens if you're a theater and you're using the new play exchange to find work? Again, you're surrounded by this. Right now, this 
bizarre universe of playwrights and you don't know anything about them and your knowledge is imperfect. Well, when you've got plays in a database and they're all tagged with metadata, this one is this length, it's by an author from this state, of this gender, it's about this subject, it's about, it's in this genre, et cetera, et cetera, they're ordered. And you can slice and dice them any way you like. So a theater goes into the system and immediately finds out exactly the plays that are suitable for what they're looking for. My budget can only handle eight actors, so I've eliminated all the plays with nine or more actors. I really want to build up my you know, presence with this kind of audience, and I'm really interested in this subject matter, etc. So it's all slice and dice. And then, because these recommendations are in the system, you can find the ones that are endorsed. Not only by the literary manager who works for your particular theater and the people you've got in your email network, but by intelligent professionals all around the country. Suddenly you have the wisdom of crowds from the smartest people who think about theater in the United States. This is a radically different experience for a theater looking to fill a slot than ever before. And instead of just opening up and saying, all right, send me your work, America, and then you get 300, 900, 1,000 plays that you have to sort through, it's, there's no opening up. It, I'm going to go hunt, and I'm going to decide what I'm looking for, and be surprised by things I didn't know about that people that I value have recommended. I'm going to find things I'm looking for that I didn't know existed in ways that were never before possible. In addition to recommendations, we've given people who read plays another tool that's also the, uh, the first time they'll ever have this uh, before, and that's the ability to write private notes about the plays that they are thinking about and keep those notes. So if we can think again about what this experience is like for the reader of plays. person reads a play for that theater, writes a note about it, and it gets stored in some database that that theater keeps. Some awful database that they hate, that they paid a lot of money to build and to maintain. Or maybe it's a spreadsheet like us playwrights have. It's a small theater. That's all they've got. And then the, the reader is writing notes for another theater, changes jobs maybe, and now that first theater has access to the note that was written, but the reader doesn't. So you know, right now, the theaters that you write coverage for, as a literary manager or dramaturg, it stays with the people you write the coverage for. In the new play exchange, you will always have access to your thinking about plays and playwrights in the American theater. As you move through your career as a literary manager or drum jerk or anyone who thinks about plays, you will accrue knowledge that you can always access. You will always be able to search through what you thought about a specific artist and her or his work. This is, again, a track record. You've only had that up here before. Or if you stay at one theater working for 20 years, you always have access to their database. Now you're a free agent, and you have a permanent record that you always have access to. So we've gotten all these features and functions built into the new play exchange, and then we added another layer that we're calling the social layer. Not social like Twitter, mm -hmm. not social like Facebook, but social like this. If you are a theater or a reader of plays, and you have favorite playwrights whose work you want to stay abreast about, you can watch them in the new play exchange. So that the next time Steve Yaki adds a play to the new play exchange, I get a bing in my profile alerting me that he's added a new script. So I can know immediately when there's new Steve Yaki work and read it and be aware of what he's doing and developing in his career. There's no like waiting and hunting and being passive, waiting to be passively told the work is there. I can decide that's a playwright whose art I value. The playwright whose relationship matters to me. Likewise, if you are a theater or a person who evaluates plays, you can also watch people who are reading plays. So I may not have Liz Engelman on my staff of my theater, but she's a genius, right? And I want to know what Liz is thinking about the new plays she's encountering in her daily work in the theater. So I watch her, and every time she writes a new recommendation, I'm made aware. There's a bing in my profile that says, hey, take a look. Liz said this about Steve's play. So I am benefiting on an ongoing way, staying abreast of the work and maintaining the relationship with the artists I care about, 
and leveraging the thinking of people beyond my immediate circle. And as I move through the system and encounter plays and encounter other people's thinking about plays, I find other people who think in interesting ways to me about plays. I can watch them and slowly grow my network of people who are supporting my mission or my theater without actually knowing that that's what they're doing, right? They're working on my behalf passively just by expressing their love for plays that they find when they're doing their day job. So that's the new play exchange. What this amounts to for playwrights, at the end of the day, is it's a platform on which you can share your work instead of submit your work on your own terms. So right now you've got one theater who wants this kind of query packet, and one theater who wants a submission, but only on Wednesdays, and, and only before 5 p.m., and you have to carry it there by dog sled, and you've got one place that <laughs> a 10-page sample, and one place an 11-page sample, and no, none of your name doesn't need to be on any page except page three, right? It's crazy to me. Now, you put your materials on the new play exchange, you are responsible for being savvy about how you talk about your play, about how you write a synopsis, about what kind of samples you put up there, whether you put up the full script or not is up to you, whether you write a savvy description, whether you use the right keywords, how you talk about your work, and that's it. Your job is to make your plays discoverable, and that's exactly what you do when you add it to the new play exchange. Your work becomes discoverable in a way that it isn't right now, because where are your plays right now? They're on your hard drive. No one who works at the theater is searching on your hard drive for plays. <laughs> but if you put all your work in this one shared place, and there's one place for them to go, and instead of emailing their five friends who email two other friends on their behalf, they can go to one place and find work. And if your work is there, and you've tagged it right, it will be found. It still has to be good, but it can be found in a way that, yeah, that's a catch, it's got to be good. <laughs> so what is the new play exchange for theaters? Well, it's a smarter way than ever to discover new work. You know, right now, the way you have to discover new work, asking our friends, flying to conferences, seeing shows in other cities, networking, and the submission process. All of that is inefficient, right? No one is happy about the 1,500 plays that make it to that other side. No one is happy about the process of getting them there. We're going to try and do better. The other thing is, new play exchanges for theaters, it's a cloud-based, so that someone else maintains the database for you, uh, script research and evaluation platform. Instead of, you know, for small theaters trying to build their own little databases where they store thinking about plays, the new play exchange immediately can take the place of that effort. And as we grow the capacity, bigger and bigger theaters will eventually decide, hey, we can run our platform on the new play exchange as well. And then for readers, it's an easy way to finally support the plays they're most passionate about that they can't do. Two sentences. You write two positive sentences about a play. And then when someone else looking for a play like that finds it, ooh, there's some nice words about that play. I want to read it. It's also a permanent archive of their relationship between plays, with plays and playwrights. Not the archive isn't just here anymore. Gee, I remember I did a reading with that guy. What was that play like again? I don't remember. It's a permanent digital archive of their thinking that they can access forever. What is it for everyone? I said this at the beginning, and now I'm going to repack it up for you. It's a platform for connecting plays and producers built for the common good of the new play sector. I didn't, we didn't build this for playwrights. We didn't build this for theaters. We didn't build this for dramaturgs, for literary managers. We built this for all of us. Right? That's why we're going around to places like this, to talk about it to all of us and answer every question that is probably now simmering in your brain and you're dying to ask. Um, because we want to make sure, because we're not perfect, not far from it. Um, we're doing the best we can with the knowledge we've uh, acquired from people around the country, but we get smarter every time we do one of these presentations, we get tough questions. So I want your tough questions when the time comes. And if you think it's a tough question, I've probably been asked before, nine times out of ten you're right, but it's the tenth time out of ten that is important, right? Because um, that's what makes us smarter and makes the platform better. So, you want to look at it? 
Yes. Yes. Totally. <laughs> Let's see if uh, technology will allow me to show it to you. <coughs> Pardon me for one minute. You do have a browser on here somewhere, right? Where? On the bottom of the tray. No. Are we already on the network? Did you make that happen? Um, the talk comes up. No. Oh. Can someone get me on the network, please? If you would get on the network and then launch that page, newplayexchange.org, I'll start taking questions. Uh, so, questions while we get this loaded up. Oh, let's see, there's one or two. I'm going to go to the distinguished John Jordan before we start. I'm, I'm interested again to make sure I understand. So the endorsers are people who are reading for theaters, is that right? Actually, any member of the New Play Exchange can endorse any other play. Anyone who belongs. Right. So you, me, Jojo, Steve Yaki, anyone in this room who joins can then endorse another play. But doesn't that then create a new elite? Uh, if your mom can endorse a play, does that, is she a member of the elite? Well, she's dead, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was. Very much so. Doing a lot of amazing things with technology. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. 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 Uh, any, well, that's all I'm asking is, do you see any problem in... No, this is a super democratic platform. It is meant so that anyone can join, not in the American theater, anyone who wants to join can join. I see. So we have actually made a basic membership that's free, that allows you to go on, look up a play by the play title or by the playwright's name, and if you care to, read it, and if you care to, write a recommendation of it. And then the, the pricey not pricey, the priced memberships are, the bar is so low that we want, we want to set the bar so low that no one could reasonably say I cannot afford that. So we're talking about $10 a year. That's for playwrights? Yes. So, yes. Copyright protection. What about copyright protection? How are you ensuring copyright protection of a play? The United States of America ensures the copyright protection of a play, not the new play exchange. If you are worried about anyone stealing your play, I wouldn't add your play to the new play exchange. Generally, we have found that I, Winnie and Sullivan, at 45 years old, seem to be the mind. Anyone younger than me is like, yeah, put my play up there. I want people to find it, download it, do it. Great. And it all of me is like, mm, no, I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can see both perspectives, because I'm right there in the middle. Um, so I, you know, I can only tell you that I think that's the way things are going. And, um, and I understand your concern at the same time. But you don't have to put the whole script up. No, you can, you, it is up to playwrights to decide whether they want to put the whole script, uh, just a sample of the script, or, not, or nothing. Uh, it's up now. What's hey. your recommendation of where that's going to go? Do you have an idea? Or a whole script, out? that's what I think. But that's just me. Uh, not all the images are loading, but I'm going to log in. As first, I'm going to show you me. on TV, I hope this is like scintillating video. <laughs> <laughs> um, something if your connection is not very fast in here for some reason, or this is a super <coughs> old version of, I think this is actually a super old version it's of Internet product, Explorer. It's probably the software on the laptop. Yeah. So this is not actually what it looks like. You would normally <laughs> see my big old handsome face in the upper right hand corner. But essentially, if, um, if I can give you some sense up here. Um, Playwright's name, playwright's bio, 
and then plays that playwright has uploaded, uh, adding another play, my agent's contact information, my website, my Twitter handle, just the contact information I've decided to upload. Jojo, if you click artistic statement, so you'll see that if you want to get to know me in other terms, you can read more about um, my work globally as an artist. Um, if you go back um, and just pick any one of the plays and click, actually pick um, one that has a recommendation on it. Uh, crack. So yeah, and that's a 10 minute play, so perfect. Um, you just see the uh, sort of my synopsis about the play. I've added a few other things because it's published. I added a link to the publisher. Uh, recommendations that have been written about it. Jojo was very kind to give me her password so I could write one. <laughs> <laughs> you see the development history of the play. You see the production history of the play. Um, and then you see all the metadata I'm talking about, the genre, the keywords, um, the length of the play, the cast size, uh, the breakdown of the roles by gender, the roles, uh, the breakdown of the roles by race, uh, the age level appropriateness of the play, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you go up and you click Jojo on library, you will see that as I have moved through the system, there have been this one play that I added to my reading list, and that's it. Like, because I'm a playwright, I'm here mostly to share my work. Uh, but as I was, you know, wandering around, I found a play I wanted to read. Click on activity. You will see that I have oh, that it's telling me that Basil Primadol added this play, and that's the only playwright I'm watching at the moment. Um, so if you log out under profile. And log in, please, as yourself. I don't know why the images are. It actually right. looks really pretty normally. It's really gorgeous, actually. That's the thing people are saying universally, like, sexy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Firefox. Firefox, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. So JoJo is in the system. Wow, it's really bad on this browser. Can we try uh, Firefox? Yeah, it could not hurt. Jojo is in the system as um, uh, an administrator of a theater. So I'm going to show you what that's like. Jojo is in as the administrator of the Welder, which is a Players Collective she and I founded in D.C., and which you can hear more about at 3.30. There we go. Um, sexy. 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 <laughs> you win. Sexy. Thank you. We're bringing sexy back to technology. End of the time play. Oh, at the Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're definitely going to have another round of questions. There you go. There's JoJo's face. Okay, so you see again JoJo's bio, JoJo's <laughs> website, and her Twitter handle. And here are the recommendations that she wrote. Um, by the way, I, I warned Steve that we were doing okay. this. So. Um, it is a smart piece of work. It is, really, I know. Um, so you see all the recommendations she's wrote. Now, I did a bunch more stuff for her. So if you click under Profile, actually, see that she's also the administrator of the Welders. You can see that she administers the theater profile within the system. And again, all I put in there was a bio and the sort of general nuts and bolts about the theater. Click on Library. You'll see that in her library, because she has the reader powers, she has plays that she has. Um, set aside to read, and then if you click on private notes, she has written, she has written two private notes about two plays that she's read. And obviously this gets a lot more uh, robust, the more work that you do. Click on activity. She's watching five playwrights, including Mr. Yaki, and um, has written a bunch of, these are all the players, so uh, spots with somebody she follows, so she got notified when he uploaded We Tiresias. Again, when he uploaded Sisters of Elry Hollow and this play, etc. So, again, when there's more people in the system, this is going to be a robust feed of stuff that's happening, you know, uh, the stuff that people are doing, people you have decided to watch. So, go to the search. So, because JoJo is a theater in the New Play Exchange, she has 
more than just look up play by play title and play by name. She has this robust set of filters that she can use to search play. So if you scroll down, you see genres, and she can add keywords, and she can enter cast sizes and get into some great details about what kind of cast she's looking for, kind of work she's looking for. Um, she can look for work just by women. For those of you who have been following the list and the Kilroys, she can just click that box and then boom, the only results she'll get will be plays by women. Um, so if you just go up and just type the letter A, immediately all of the plays and play titles that have A in it, that's it. So add any other letter next and see what happens. Okay, so it's slowly winnowing down the plays until, there you go, boom. The one play she was looking for. So it's like this dynamic immediate search. And if she had had filters, she can add the filters, remove them. So it's like when you're looking for flights on kayak, and you're like, yeah, all these dates and these times, and then you get four flights, and you're like, oh, maybe I could leave a little earlier. And then all of a sudden, you've got 38 flights. And you're like, let me sort these by price, because you're trying to find exactly the work you're looking for. These are the tools that we have given um, people looking for plays to find them. So, so I just went in and um, did only female playwrights and at least a cast size of eight that had the letter A in them. And this is with only about 170 or 180 playwrights in the system. Look at how many came up. I'm curious. OK, so great. All right, so more questions than you first. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, do you, does that provide a forum for the, the actual play to be seen? Is it, I'm just. Seen I just, in what way? Well, for example, I um, came back from a workshop with the Broadway League. And within their workshop, they have something similar it's, I think it's in a national alliance of theaters where they have an opportunity to come to the event and actually do their performance. So it's seen amongst different other playwrights and writers and producers. And I'm wondering if this, your forum has a platform where they can actually see the play. It, it's just technology, so no. So it's basically like an internet, like a website where you can access all these things, can network and connect with all these different genres of, of people, but yes. then the play itself is not seen. It's it's just kind of like to, to, to show your... I mean, I just, I was just curious, like, it would be wonderful if there's a way to put, a, like, a video or a, a, a sample of so, the play. So um, if you click on... Um, sorry, Jorgo. That's okay. Um, any play. Actually, you might have to log out and log in as me do that solid in that Gmail uh, and at the same password. Um, part of the things you can add to the profile of a play are any links to supporting video, links to supporting um, PDF. So if you're writing a musical, you can put up uh, links to MP3 recordings of the song. You can put up sheet music. You can put up other supporting material. My plays didn't have any of that, but I can show you what it looks like. Are, so, there, are there any are there any required credentials that you have to have to be no. up on the website? No. Nope. So if you scroll down, you can see that I could have added. This is my play, Hot and Cold. Um, no. Um, down there, you go. Sorry. You can see I could have added a lot. Keep going. Uh, I have only added a draft of the play. I could have added a sample. I could have added a blind version. We're going to implement the ability to do blind searches down the road. I could have added a score, I could have added links to MP3 files, and I could have added links below that to um, video. We're going to be adding more. We don't have a link right now to the published version of the play, uh, and that's a known thing we need to do. There's a lot more than that. I'm going to take a few well, other I questions from other people. If it's accessible, it's accessible to, everybody, to everyone. When yes, it's up there, everybody that's, that's, can see it. Yes. And, and, okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, my question is, so you people are commenting. What if there's a comment that's so negative that you have to dispute yeah. it and talk about it? And, and naturally, we are, you know, we want to be ahead of the, trust the community, but also provide the policing mechanism to. So if I were to, if you cancel out of editing the play <coughs> and go to uh, the one you cracked, go to crack. Um, I'll show you 
uh, Joda's recommendation. If I were to read this and go, wow, that's terrible, you see that report button? I or anyone else in the system who finds a, I can flag it. And then that go, enters it into a system where by me or Joda or anyone else at NNPN can remediate, remediate the situation right away. So we want to give the community the tools to kind of police itself, um, but we're there to step in as necessary. Yeah? Okay, so here's my worry. Um, if I were a, a professional play reader, right, uh, and it, this is human nature, I love Jose Rivera. He's awesome. He's one of my favorite playwrights. Yeah. Everybody knows he's awesome, and so me and a whole bunch of my colleagues are, the minute that he publishes a new play or puts something up, I'm going to totally read that new play. But let's say my capacity is I can only read 10 plays a week or only comment on 10 plays a week. It means all of the playwrights who are already nationally known, highly na with high name recognition, are going to be immediately shot up and shoot up in recommendations. Whereas playwrights who are just breaking in are not, no one's going to know about them. It's, it so would be very hard to discover them. You saw when JoJo did the search that there's just a list of plays. There's not the ones that are most recommended or higher at the top. They're just a list of plays that meet the criteria. There's no way for her to say, sh there's no selection filter that says, sh only show me the most recommended plays. Or the it's just when you find the play, you might see some thinking by people, but you really care, you really care about the work, right? And the recommendation is a way to make you feel more comfortable and to maybe understand it more. Okay, one, one follow-up question yeah. to that. Uh, the search mechanism uh, means that if I type in A, there's gonna be like a, a play that starts with A, always at the top, it'll always be seen, which means I should name all my plays Aardvark something. Aardvark 1, Aardvark 2. I'm going to answer your question. Is there an algorithm yeah. that I think I'm going gonna, gonna to answer your question more generally speaking. And I'll say that as with Google, anytime you build a technology, there are going to be people who try and game the system and find ways around that. I know that, and I, I can't predict what they're going to do. Pay ten friends to join and write recommendations exactly. that plays. I don't know what it is. I know that we're going to pay attention. I know that we're going to watch what happens. I know that we're going to do what we can to address and fix those things. I also think another one that people ask about a lot is, well, what if I go in and add a hundred keywords to my play so that I always come up in keyword searches? I think what's, what what would happen to a play like that is that when someone finds it and sees the hundred keywords, they're going to say. This person does not know their play very well. <laughs> and I don't want to work with a person who doesn't, can't be an interlocutor for their own work. Um, so again, I, I don't have a specific answer to what you're saying, but I can tell you that I'm here to pay attention to those problems and fix them when they arise. Can't, I can't foresee them in the future. I'm going to go to the way back because I have ignored them. You in, on the right, yes. Um, I just wanted to understand a little bit more about this. Yeah. So, correct me if I'm wrong, you can actually have, like in Facebook, uh, your own sort of network, so people that you follow, right? Uh, yes, but it's a, this is a, Facebook is a two-way relationship, this is one way. So, if I follow them, they don't know I'm following them? Right. Okay, so. but then you said that there was some sort of alert, so I only get alerted by them when they upload something, I'm not, I'm not alert. You, whenever, if you follow, if you watch me when I add a play, you get an alert that I added a play. And then, what if you're a playwright that I follow and you write, and, or you write? You will get a notification that I wrote a recommendation. Okay, so that's really cool. So, if you're friends with Jose Rivera, um, he wouldn't necessarily know that she's their friend, right? Right, exactly. Because okay. what would be so cool is if he did, because then he can read her play and then recommend it. Yeah, I mean, I think, here's the thing in general with the tool, we built less stuff into it than we might have wanted to on the thinking that we should do a small number of stuff and get it right and figure out where we didn't get it right and then get it right. Uh, rather than try and build all these complicated interactions and then do it all wrong, right? So we're just going to do little successes and grow from there. It, it reminds me a little bit of the same not as intricate, but like LinkedIn, where you can recommend people, and then you kind of see the algorithm. Yes, yeah, so although the, the link
LinkedIn recommendations algorithm is really, really complex. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you in the, with the black, yes? Yeah. Uh, that's how they find us or our plays. Yeah. But how do we find the theaters? You don't, because your job is not to find them and submit your work to them anymore. Your job is to put it in one place, right here on the new play exchange. Uh, then they find your work. So we are taking the standard paradigm when we're trying to find them and give them our work. Can I give you my work? Can I give you my work? Can I give you my work? We're not doing that anymore. We're saying, here's my work. Come get it. So if there's a cult scripts or a contest or something, that wouldn't be there. That's, that's not here. Now I will say, having said that, we are working on what we're calling an opportunities module. So you guys should all hear this. Um, Again, right now, when someone wants to run a contest, they open the gate and say, we'll take any uh, piece of work that meets these criteria from July 1st to July 31st. And what happens is they'll say, we want only plays by authors in Kentucky. And then, come on, some of you will say, I used to live in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> or, Place about Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I was eating Kentucky, was eating fried, Kentucky chicken. fried chicken when I wrote it. <laughs> um, and so we, we overwhelm them with plays that really do not actually meet their criteria. And then they have 900 plays to read instead of 100. I'm exaggerating. Um, from our point of view, how do you find all the places? And how, how do you find all the opportunities to apply to? There's the official player, it's a Facebook, which announces its list of opportunities. There's the amazing Clarity Center, which has like the leading, if you ask me, the best database of opportunities in the country, the most curated and carefully uh, constructed database of opportunities. And so you can stay abreast of all of these sources, right? But it's still hard to know if you found all of the ones for which you're right. So in the module that we are building, uh, theater will be able to log into the new play exchange and create an opportunity and say, this opportunity is only for Kentucky playwrights. And then, the magic of the new play exchange will only notify Kentucky playwrights of the opportunity. But every Kentucky playwright will know that the opportunity exists. So all people who are appropriate for the opportunity, who because the, the theater set them using the criteria that we have in the system, the theater will say, these are the things that must be met. So then any playwright who has a play that, is, that meets all those criteria will get a bing on the activity feed saying, your play, um, Crack, is eligible for this opportunity. Then you can click through and see the opportunity, and if you decide that it's something you want to pursue, and maybe it isn't, you can pursue it. But it is not a submission mechanism at all. Right? We're trying to eliminate the noise for both playwrights and the people who post opportunities. Right now, people who submit to opportunities, and I do not submit to more than eight a year, submit to a hundred to win three. And I always say to the people, wouldn't you rather submit to nine to get those three and not waste your time? The nine that you're really right for and still get the same amount? And to the people who are submitting opportunities, they, they boast about, we got 1,200 scripts this year. That means their opportunity is desirable, right? But they also had to read 1,185 scripts to get the 15 that they wanted. And, if, and, so, and, and at least 300 of those are just totally not right. And we're not going to do anything about quality, right? But we're going to eliminate the ones that aren't really, that don't really meet the criteria and reduce the noise. So I have seen your hand several times and then uh, Al, I already got you, so then I'll go to you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what the next step is? So uh, a theater encounters uh, crap, or a reader encounters crap. Well, let's say a theater encounters yeah. crap, and they, they like it. So they downloaded it, they read it. Well, so I have my agent's contact info on my profile, and they can go to her. Actually, crack is published, so they can click on the link, or they can copy and paste the link into their browser and go buy a copy, or go to my publisher. Um, if I don't have either of those things, they can use my contact information to reach out to me and negotiate with me directly. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Okay. Um, one quick question. 
um, I'm assuming this is going to be available like an iPad. It's not. It's not going to be like an issue with uh, uh, Adobe or anything like that, right? No, it's cross-platform. Great. Okay. Mobile friendly. Um, so now this is a question. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a twofold. As a player, will I have ability to read other people's work? Yes. Okay. Great. Now, this is a maybe a suggestion for future. Yeah. Let's say right now, as a reader, you um, you as a reader like so and so's work and so and so forth, and you have rec recommendations, right? So does Jojo. So now Tom Smith comes on as a reader, and he tends to agree with certain plays. So in other words, kind of like you guys have the same taste, would it be possible in the future to have kind of like Pandora-like recommendations? So, Yeah, so that's, that's actually on our radar screen, okay. that down the road we will be able to say, to, like <laughs> when you're reading Cracked right now, it doesn't say other plays by Woody and Sullivan in the right column. Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't say other plays in this genre in the right column. So there's that discovery that a great radio station does for you. A great radio station doesn't play the songs that you already know, or only those. It plays some of those and some that are like that, and some that, and you got get guided into new experience. It's exactly. discovery, that sort of sponsor, that's, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Synchronicity, like oh, wow. I stumbled onto this. Um, the other thing we want to do eventually down the road on the home page of the New Play Exchange is 10 new sci-fi plays that have been uploaded, or 10 new horror plays that have been uploaded, or um, uh, 10 new recommendations, or one random play, or all kinds of things to sort of stimulate all of us to think outside of our known networks to find people we just don't know. Um, you, I saw you first. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this has already been answered. But because uh, earlier somebody had, made, had asked a question about uh, putting up like uh, only a, a piece of their work, not yeah. the ones there. So then, would I be writing a recommendation based on that piece, or would I have access to the whole play? You, this is the other reason that I think people are going to put up their whole plays because people are not going to write a recommendation mm -hmm. of, a, of a synopsis. They might say this premise sounds interesting to me. Can I see the play? Can I, see, you know, but it, but but it may be so like. Um, Someone might know my work from another source. Like, so again, you've got that dramaturg who is reading plays for uh, the O'Neill. And they're like, wow, these are great. And as soon as the O'Neill picks its finalist, I'm going to go in and pick the five that I really love that didn't make it and write recommendations for them. Now, the, those playwrights may not have uploaded the script, but the person has read it another way. Mm -hmm. So they can, the recommendation can still exist. Was that what you were going to say, Jonathan? Yes. Uh, blue shirt. Uh, are these uh, plays uh, unproduced? Uh, uh, great question. Uh, no, they're not unproduced. Let me ask my next question. Can you uh, accept a, pr a positive critical reception uh, from a, a journal as a recommendation? Uh, well, again, that'll be on the playwright to decide whether they're comfortable with a recommendation or not. So again, uh, to be clear, this is a database of new plays. That will be, in some cases, plays that are new to the world, and in some cases, plays that are new to you, right? So people will be able to upload their work, and eventually, theaters will have the tool when they're searching to say, show me only unproduced plays, or only plays that have had one or two productions, or just show me anything, because I just don't care. So eventually, 20 years down the road, this will be a chronicle of the last two decades of the American theater and the new work that was produced. Um, so that's a longer answer to your first question. Um, you. Uh, you had shown us a category for uh, uploads for a score. Yeah. You envisioned this whole network to include musicals or plays with oh, music. Oh, totally, yes. That's is, why we've got all that there. Then as a follow-up, what search field do you have for the theater that says plays with music or musicals? Um, it's a we don't, and we need to. And in fact, that is today's first new <laughs> Thank okay. you. Yay! Uh, Write it down. Got it. <laughs> oh. She's behind me, so it's um, awesome. The blind searches you mentioned, yeah. the guy never knows how many people are reading their play. Is that correct? Yeah, so this was something that we had to figure out and negotiate. So players are like, I want to know who's reading my work. I want to know. I want to be aware every time someone clicks on it. And, and dramaturgs are like, 
if you tell them I'm reading your work, I'm not reading their work. <laughs> then they're going to pester me for what I thought about their work. Right? And you're no longer a time saver. And do the dramaturgs, the, the theaters, the agents, what do they have let, to pay? Do let me finish. Let me finish answering the question you just asked. I got more to say, and then you can ask that follow up. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be given playwrights, and we haven't done this yet. Um, data about the broad uh, interest in their work. So you will be able to log on and say, um, 15 people have added crack to their reading list. 15 people have downloaded it. Uh, 78 people have viewed the, the, this page, profile page. So you will have some assessment of the level of interest in your work, but it's not it's specific information that you want to have. So I'm sorry, what was your next follow -up? second question was, um, all those people who are reading anonymously, yeah. the, the agents, the theaters, yeah. the literary managers, do they have a fee? How does that work yes. in terms of the system uh, economically? So it's a great question. I'm going to answer it with uh, a question for the audience. So I've already revealed that the price that we are, so let, let's be clear about some context. We are a nonprofit organization. We're not getting rich off of anybody. Because nobody in this room has any money. <laughs> Keep it. Right? Uh, our job is to serve the American theater. And actually, I don't consider it my job to build the software I want. I consider it my job to build the software that we want. And I'm, I'm, I and NNPN and our partners are the locus of that energy. But it's you all who are going to support it. And so we wanted to give away for the people who are going to use the tool to support it in an ongoing way beyond the work that, beyond the resources we get from the foundations who have supported us today. So the price is really um, a way to contribute to the ongoing evolution and development of the platform. To have me there to answer your tech questions, to have someone there when someone flags a recommendation as inappropriate, to have us be able to build all these other features that I'm talking about, to be able to pay a firm, a development firm, to do that. So I've already revealed that we are um, leaning toward, and none of this is final because it's all free right now, uh, if you have the codes that we're giving out to our partners. Um, but we're leaning toward $10 a year for play, right? $10 a year. Think about that. Two lattes. <laughs> Ten dollars a year, one pack of cigarettes if you're still a smoker, and please quit. <laughs> please quit and buy a one year membership. <laughs> one day is still smoking. Um, so uh, that we, we have two other packages that one can buy um, on the New Play Exchange. One is the reader package, which is um, literary managers and dramaturgs and directors and anyone looking for new work. And then one is the institutional package um, that allows for a bunch more. Right now, um, uh, it's just those three packages and you have to choose one or the other. Eventually you'll be able to choose multiple. And eventually you will also, uh, if you will buy an organizational package, you'll be able to give out five reader licenses with your, with your, so. That's all the setup and context. I want to know, are there any literary managers and dramaturgs in the house right now? Okay, just people with their hands raised. No one else gets to answer this question. What would you pay? To do what? For, you know, to have all the things that I've just shown you. The ability to do these robust searches for plays along certain criteria. To keep a permanent archive of your relationship with plays and plays that follows you from job to job. Um, and it's a tool that helps you do your job better. Like when someone says, have you heard about this playwright? You can be like, mm -hmm. right now you go to Google, but instead you could go here and find out more precise information. So what would you pay? Just well, I think, well, I'm really shoestring, so I do $30. $30 a year? Yeah. And I did have a question. In that Hold on, I want to get other numbers from other people. Yeah. Well, I think there's, in, I think there's in a way, there's two answers to the question. Yeah. One is, and, and that's because... There are people who are that and they're institutional, meaning they're part of some place, and there are people that are that and they're freelance, which is what I am. Right? Yeah. So, the Imagine latter you're part freelance. of what? Pardon? Imagine you're freelance. That's right. That's what I mean, for, the, for the latter idea, the yeah. freelance idea, it's kind of phenomenal. 
what you're talking about because it allows me to carry essentially like all my coverage that I've ever done of anything with me. It's, 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 it's only talking about an aspect of the notion of, of uh, lit management and dramaturgy that's about new plays, which is not the only thing that I do, but, yeah. it, is, but it covers that in a way that nothing yeah. else has before. So give, which me is great. give me a dollar figure. <laughs> 42 cents. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I, 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 it's hard to say. I mean, it seems like the right answer would be com like compare it to an LMDA annual membership or something like that. I, I, what is it, 60? Okay, give me another number. Just I shout them out. 50. 50? I'm, not, I, I'm on several sides of the coin, so could I get like a combination? No, it? just the answer for this no, one. Yes. God, you playwrights. Every time I do this exercise, the playwrights are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> can I dramaturg your question before I answer it? Give me a number! Uh, I have a question. No, give me a number. <laughs> I will answer your question okay. after you give me a number. 25 freelance, 50 institutional. Okay. Okay, can I answer that? I can give you an idea. Now. Just give me numbers. Well, it's kind of, it's a point system. No, right. numbers. <laughs> numbers. <laughs> I'll talk to you about your idea afterwards. Do you have a number? 50. Okay, so we're, we're now zeroing in on $20 a year. Oh, wow. Wow. For readers. And we, we toy with the making that 10 as well. Again, we want to set the number so that anyone can get in, right? We want to set the number so that anyone can get in, but everyone is contributing to the ongoing support of the tool. So is there anyone here who runs it? Can I jump in just for one second? Yes. So I, I was just going to say, uh, it's interesting as we've done this to go around to different cities. Oh, yeah. So when we were in New York, <laughs> the, the um, people in the room, the playwrights in the room, said $100 a year. Because that's their point of reference, because you can only buy a latte for like $8. <laughs> but then you go to Iowa City, and they were more around like 15 or 20 So wanting to make sure, as we said, it's across the board that anybody, if you're in the middle of America, if you're in a major city, everybody can afford it. So does anyone run a theater here? Okay, so now imagine the same thing for a theater. You get to maintain your theater profile. Eventually, you'll get to do opportunities in the system. I want to know what you would pay. And again, just give me a number. <laughs> Susie, first. What's your number? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Going once. Go. <laughs> I'm still at thirty. Fifty. You're still at thirty. Okay. Any other numbers? So we're a angling around fifty for theaters. And again, that's a, that's a price point that allows a storefront theater in Chicago, right, to afford it, ish, you know, if they find it useful. And it also lets a giant theater, uh, pick giant theater X in your brain, whatever you think of as a giant theater in your community, to buy this uh, for their staff as a, a rounding error in a lunch budget, right? It's a, you know, it's a, small amount, it's a small amount of money to have access to this cool thing where they can find out work uh, about local new playwrights. Um, so that's where we're headed. Now, I know there are probably people saying, you know what you should really do is a point system where for every play you review, you get X dollars and blah, blah, blah. And believe me, we have considered all of those, and we have decided not to do them for now. But our minds are not closed. Like down the road, that might prove to be a smoother way to do it. We might create packages of the three different kinds of profile. Um, Jojo, would you log out and go to the Get Started page so you can see? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Whatever. Um, to, the, to, to the Get Started page. Um, so you'll see these are the three user types, and these are the features that we've listed for each type. And eventually, um, there will be a lot more for institutions than for anyone else, and that's also a little bit why it's more expensive. So there are other models. Yes? My question is, I get plays from people who want it set in New York. I'm never going to do a tour that's set in New York. So is there, on this little surge thing, the setting of the play, either it's generic or right. South Florida or wherever I happen to be that I need my play? Right. It's interesting. But am I going to do a New York play? Geographical. Yeah. There's the, the geographical criteria we have now is the authorship. So if you want an author, but, but people in Iowa write about New York too. So I don't, you know, that's new. That's actually no one has mentioned that either. So you get um, uh, two in Miami. <laughs>
Um, I don't know how we would tackle that, honestly. My, like, my gut is that, that, wow, that's complicated. Because settings, please have multiple settings. How would I describe the setting given to someone else? Well, we we just need to have a setting field and make that searchable. I don't know. That's something for us to figure out. But I thank you as much as I thank you for the, you've made us smarter today. Thank you. Ah. Will playwrights be able to search on other playwrights? Yes, but only by name and play title. Not region, because I think it'd be good for networking, too, because yes. you could see the type of people who write, you know, at least the style you respect, to create writer's groups. You know, that's a cool idea. It's not there now. My name is rocking it today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, how do we get rid of No, I mean, it's not, um, it's not anything we can do now. Um, we've, a lot of people ask that, like, so I've signed up maybe 170 playwrights, and the most frequent feature they ask for is, I want an alphabetical list of the other playwrights who are in there. And I understand intuitively why they want that, because they, they, they put in their friends' names to see if their friends are in there or if someone they know is in there, and that's cool. And I understand why they don't want to feel alone, and they want, at the same time, this isn't intended to be a network built for the common good of the American theater to connect playwrights and playwrights. It's to connect playwrights and producers. And so that we're trying to foster that connection. It's, that's where our main efforts are. So maybe down the road. Um, let's see, I want to call on someone I haven't called on, Lojo. So I think this is sort of related to price. Um, because I think that people you know, in like the, any kind of matchmaking service, which is kind of what this is, you know, the more matches you actually the more value it is to the people who are yes. in the system. Yes. So I'm wondering what kind of interest you've had from literary managers and artistic directors about how much they'll actually use this so we can determine is it really going to create a match for us? So this is really the this is the classic question. It's my favorite question. I love this question. I've mostly, as Jojo said, or Nan said, um, We've mostly spoken to people who are all of one user type in the room together, all playwrights, all literary managers, all etc. And they always say some version of, I know why I would use this, and we all know why we would use this, but why would this other group use this, right? I'm not sure, playwrights and playwrights say, oh, I see the benefit of this for playwrights, but why theaters? And theaters say, I can see why I would use this for my theater, but why are playwrights gonna put their work there? Everyone has doubt about the other group. So all I can say is, trust us. <laughs> <laughs> so all the groups, and they all won. Um, however, I do think that the, as we build our capacity to talk about the tool, and again, we're in beta. There's about 180 users total in the tool right now. Um, as we start to make love connections, which takes a while, like from finding a script to opening night takes a long while, right? So maybe two years before we have a lot of success stories to share, but when we have them, we're going to use them to talk to people about why it matters and why it, why it works. Um, there'll be no eHarmony commercials, I promise you. <laughs> um, yes, yes. ma'am. You yeah. talked about notifying playwrights of specific opportunities. In order to do that, when you have something that's only for female playwrights or African American playwrights or Asian, are you going to be asking those demographic factors from the playwrights? Um, yes, we are asking them, but all questions like that are optional to answer, um, fully in compliance with you know best practices. I think about how people want to or not choose to identify themselves. We've also been super diligent in stretching out of our white male privilege uh, blinders to make sure that we're looking at every perspective we can and asking people to make us smarter about things to make sure we're being as inclusive as possible, um, which is really important to us. Really, really important to us. Yes? Uh, just woman down, uh, earlier asked about universities, and I'm, I'm listening to all this going, I've been teaching the conservatory after this record for the last seven years. I generally spend about two hundred dollars just buying new plays um, every year, just because I'm interested and I want to know what's out there, and I want my students to have new work as opposed to. So I'm thinking that this is perfect for people who are teaching in university to have this um, access because I can sit at my computer and go, "Oh, I've got fourteen women in my graduating class, and I'm going to play for them every year." Um, <laughs> Like I said at my computer and 
have not done enough research into what would be useful for university theaters. Uh, it's something we have to do and probably will do as soon as we can next year. Uh, the other audience we haven't fully, we met even with agents, right? You can see how agents might be like, whoa, I'm not sure about this. Uh, we met with like 25 of them uh, at Abrams last year, including my own. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Avery, what do you think? You know, are you afraid of this? Do you hate this? And they were all like, we love it. We love it. It's going to get our playwrights second production, which we can't do. It's going to help us in a way that we never thought before. So they're fully signed on. Publishers, we need publishers. So Craig and other people here in the room, um, Amy and et cetera, we'll round you up at some point and, and do better for you than we have so far. Uh, yes? Yeah, which ties into the question about the agency. As representation, is there a membership profile that would allow me to administrate multiple writers' pages? Um, that's something that we actually proposed in New York. And they were like, mm, not so much. Um, it is definitely something that I have mentally considered, that I have written the, uh, what are called the user stories, to build. Um, I figured it would be intuitive so that you could administer all 25 or whatever of the playwrights. You could administer their profiles for them and maintain that, you know, make sure that the bios were good and that the synopses were good and consistent, et cetera, but not yet. However, if you're, the playwrights you represent are happy, they can give you their usernames and passwords and you can log in and do that. Just like I logged in with JoJo. She wrote some very nice things about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes? If the plays can be downloaded and read, how do you get your license in place? Uh, for production, if someone yeah. wants to produce your work, they have to negotiate with you and produce it, to produce it. And that's part of the user agreement. When you sign on, when you join, you play exchange as a user agreement yeah. that says you know what you can and cannot do with the material, and everybody that comes into the exchange will have to yeah. sign no, that. Yeah. Right? Is this going to be open worldwide or just on the United States side? Worldwide. The A in literary managers and drama charges in the Americas is world. So okay, that's North America, including Canada and South America. What about across the pond? Uh, sure. I mean, really, the only thing, we've actually built the tool so that down the road we'll be able to translate it so that it could have a Spanish language version, a Mandarin language version. Like, technically, the foundation of the code is such that it could be polylingual. Um, at the moment, it's just in English. Uh, so the limit of using it will be understand the, the ability to understand English, to know which buttons to click. Uh, but it is, we, we were, we were determined to not shortchange the future of the tool and make it um, English specific. And we it's definitely international already. I mean, it's on the internet, so anyone can get to it whose country doesn't block their access to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Red shirt, back there. Uh, Dan just mentioned the, uh, a bit about the user agreement. I'm, I'm kind of interested to hear about that, uh, because I'm sure it'll cover some things like, you know, what you said, that the, the, you know, what you do that, that, that I would assume would include prospective producers as well. Like, if you, you, you agree that you're not going to just agree this and then well, not build the writer. It doesn't like, actually include much about that. Okay. Um, it, um, please read the terms and conditions. And, 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 and I'm, I'm actually very dead serious about them. Please read them if you are willing to wait to the legalese. Because it, it took me a, a, I have hours I will not get back. <laughs> um, but I worked super hard because I care about intellectual property. Amy here in the room, I'm sitting on a panel about intellectual property in the Dropsis Guild in a week. I sat on one of the Library of Congress. I care about this stuff a lot. I worked super hard and we worked with lawyers to make it savvy and smart and protect everyone. Um, but it's a software usage license agreement. All of the other copyright laws of the United States still exist, and they're independent. The R usage agreement is just for using this tool, right? If you break a law that's on the books, that's bad. Um, but there are certain rules you agree to do, like writing positive recommendations, 
Um, it's like not squatting on someone else's profile and pretending to be someone you're not. That sort of thing is what's baked in there. But, but so here's what I say. I seriously mean if you personally, I'm looking right at you, would like to read those things and give me any thoughts, I will listen to them. And I have the power to take it to the lawyer and say, lawyer, what does this mean and is there something valuable here? Now I extend that to anyone in this room. Like we do not want to be an impenetrable wall about anything, especially about something as touchy and sensitive as that. We want to be as transparent as we can. So if you have intelligence to bring to bear, we accept. We would gratitude. Richard. I, I just want to make a comment. I think um, some of the writers' hesitancies might come from when they're reading something online that they think it's printable, but this is not printable material. They can read it, but they can't print it. They can, actually. They can. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, um, again, I think this is where this dividing line is. Older than me, they're like, I don't want anyone printing out my play and reading it. And younger than me, they're like, I just don't care. The more people who print it, that's the goal. The more people can print and read it, that's what I want. Because someone will then find it and produce it. So we've made it so that people can do what they want. Um, and by people, are, you mean playwrights? Yes, yeah, so players can do what they want. And there are technologies that we have not integrated that allow only on-screen reading. Right. And for the moment, we've decided not to do that. A, it's technically super complicated and it doesn't work on every device. Uh, I think when it goes, uh, I'm just thinking about um, her question going globally. Um, I can't track what's going to be done in, in you know, uh, Poland. Right. So it's, as a writer, I get a little trepidatious when it comes to that. So it's to, Again, and yeah. I totally yeah. understand. Sure, sure, sure. And there are young people who are like, they're doing my do in Poland. <laughs> awesome. They don't have any money there. Send me, a, send me the copy of the poster. That's fine, you know? So it's like we wanted to... Sure. Yeah. And then, I mean, so then you can also write draft. You can emblazon draft with a watermark. There are PDFs that actually um, disintegrate an hour or two after a certain date that they've been down. You know, there are different technologies that are out there. Uh, if these are downloadable, what, what about these, these uh, play publishing companies? How are they, how's that so going to for instance, my publisher said, please do not put the play up there to be downloaded. So I didn't. I put the synopsis on a 10 page sample and a link to where they can buy the play from my publisher. Yeah. Right. And that's fine. Yeah. 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 You should ask for a TED grant. A TED grant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. TED grant. Technology um, entertainment. Why not TED? I've given two TED talks. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, do they do grants? Mm -hmm. For big ideas, I go with TED Wish grants. And Jojo, right? <laughs> Did you have a question, John? No. Uh, yes, you've had your hand up for a while, yeah. Yeah, are the and then you, with the glasses. Are yeah, the right. traceable? Uh, this first question and the second. No. And the second question is, is there any way to monitor the quality of the work submitted? Because if this is open to all without a fee? Uh, uh, there's no way to monitor quality, because I can't possibly do that. Um, uh, it is open to all, but not without a fee. Um, or I did are you, I'm not actually sure I understand the other half of your question. If someone wants to download, let's say in Japan. Yeah. Uh, would they come up uh, as a, like a little thing to us saying, you know, the happy Japanese company in Tokyo just downloaded your play? Or no? no, because you never know who downloads your play. It's anonymous. And in the future, is there a way for, if someone read our play and wants to download it, that a little screen would pop up and say the cost of this is? No. no. I mean, and that's what we said earlier, is that we, people want it to be anonymous. The people who are downloading plays want to be anonymous <laughs> in doing so. Yeah, that, I mean, kind of jumping off of what Gail talked about regarding the university environment yeah. or marketplace for this, for yeah. using the tool. Um, I can, I mean, that's certainly true right now regarding the, the evil word submission process that some places, I'm glad I've been that <laughs> that some places will say, hasn't ever had a, uh, a production before, or at least not a university production before. Maybe yeah. that's another thing to put into the filtering. So we do actually, yeah, we do what, um, when you're adding the step to your production history of your play, university production is one of the options. Okay. 
So yeah, that filtering, we're planning for that level of filtering. We have about 10 minutes. Wow, that went fast. Uh, anyone else? Yes. What, so even the basic free, anybody can actually download these things as well and print them. Is for, is, uh, for everyone or just for members? Can you, can you scroll up to the search? And search for me. Search for Butcher. No, not Butcher. Search for Abstract New. Actually, no. I've actually been told that five minutes and you've just wasted two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Go back to Butcher. Um, it's a great play. <laughs> You'll notice that even though the script is up there, you can't download because you're not logged in. Gotcha. Okay. So only people who have created a profile can download the code. But you still want to Right. I just, just one little thing. Yeah. Um, there's, I, I feel like there's not any big difference between submitting your play to a company and having them Xerox it and give it to whoever. Yeah. We all have Xerox copies of many plays that I, I don't pay for. I have to pay for. Uh, <gasps> not what he's asking for. You know, but like, I've done plays. The other thing is, so the, um, which we didn't really talk about at the beginning, but the New Play Exchange came out of a collaborative literary uh, tools that NNPN has had for a decade, basically, um, where twice a year all of our members gather and they pitch plays to each other and they share scripts. And this happens across the country. I mean, Morgan loves a play and she knows that Liz will love it, Liz Engelman will love it too, but she knows she hasn't read it because it just came out and Steve Yockey just wrote it, so she'll send Liz the play. Um, and this happens right now, and this is just a central place for that to happen more easily, more efficiently, yeah. and for you to broaden your circles of positivity and the people that you know to more corners of the country. There's going to be another button that isn't here on the display, and I, I don't know if you can read these. It says recommend, my recommendation, download, and save to reading list. There was a <laughs> button here that we had to eliminate um, because we couldn't get the feature done in time for our beta release. Suggest. The idea is, well, I've read this play, and I know the theater that this would be great for, and they're in the system, so I can just hit the suggest button, mm -hmm. type their name, and click enter. Mm -hmm. Then that theater will go to its activity page and see, mm -hmm. so-and-so suggested this play for you. Oh. And you can ignore it or not, but it's there, and so that way people can proactively hunt for plays for you. Um, there's other features I could talk about where You'll be able to assign plays to readers to read and provide coverage for you. There's stuff, stuff coming down the road. And we have maybe one minute. Do you want to talk about the rollout plan? Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry, rollout plan, and then I'm probably going to go to the site. Go to the page sign up. Oh, yeah. If you go to the contact page, go down, JoJo. Um, so right now, we are going around the country um, rolling out this beta version to our partners. Um, we'll be done through September, doing the you know the world tour, and then we'll have some couple of months of redevelopment, and we're going to open up for the public sometime in early 2015. If you want to be notified when that happens, so that you are the first to get in, go to the contact us page and just put your email address here. Don't use this form, which is really about tech support and media inquiries. Just put your email address right here and hit subscribe. So it's newplayexchange.org, all spread, spelled out. Slash contact. It's not on your screen. Yes. Um, there will be, by the way, because Woody is right, you know, you all have a jillion questions. If you check your schedules, there is a breakout time later this afternoon where you can meet with these guys um, a little a, a little more closely, and I, I might even recommend going up to the cabana and having a break, an end of the end breakout by like the it. area. <laughs> of so, yeah, so that, and that will be all about general information about an NPN, in addition to any further questions you have on this. Thank you. Yeah.